Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're going to be talking about active wear. Active wear I've made for myself and active wear I'm planning on making for myself. But before we get into that, uh, today is Friday, so let's talk about the Love Notions Feature Friday pattern. Today's pattern um, that is $5 today only, uh, March 15th, <laughs> what's today, <laughs> 2024, um, is the um, Ballad Blouse. So this is a wonderful button-up, a very easy button-up shirt pattern. Um, you can do... Um, shirring with elastic thread there at the top of the yoke, which I have done, or you can do those as gathers if you don't want the shirring or don't like the shirring or are scared of the shirring. <laughs> anyway, so it's a really nice, breezy, easy to wear button up shirt. I wear mine a lot, my mustard one. I need to make more. In fact, I kind of want a patterned one um, that I do the gathers instead of the shirring, uh, just for something different. But anyway, um, there's a lot of different sleeve options. And um, again, the two different options for the yoke there. As with always, it's a really good bang for your buck. So if you don't have this one in your pattern catalog yet, now is a great time to grab it. And if you use the code 10TKS at checkout, you will get an additional 10% off that sale price. Um, so that takes like 50 cents off. So it's a really good bang for your buck, a really good value if you don't have that one in your pattern catalog yet. Okay. Let's get into, oh, also, before we get into the video, um, I mentioned it, um, I don't know, a couple times ago, that University of Sewing, which is the uh, company that loans me my Bernina, se se uh, my Bernina 790, um, is doing an embroidery event in April, and um, the cutoff for the special, so if you sign up for both events, um, the cutoff for the special pricing on those is the 18th of this month, so in just a couple of days. So um, I just want to remind you if that's something of interest to you. But it's two separate events. Um, on the 17th, uh, April 17th, it's like a seminar where you're watching someone do a whole bunch of really crazy things with um, embroidery machines and everything that they can do. Lunch is included, all that kind of stuff. And then the second event is actually a two-day event. It is the 18th and the 19th, and you bring your machine, your embroidery machine, or if you don't have one yet, you can use one of theirs. They just need to know that um, so they can have enough machines there. Um, but you're going to be doing projects, so you're going to actually be in doing the work, creating things, learning how to use um, any it doesn't have to be Bernina. So any sewing um, embroidery machine that you have, as long as it's in good working condition and good working order, because they're not going to have time to be able to help you figure out your embroidery machine. They're just showing you some wonderful projects that you can use with your embroidery machine. So as long as you know how to use your embroidery machine, um, you can bring that with you to the, that event as well. Um, and that's a two-day event. So anyway, if you are in the central Indiana area or close by, and that is of interest to you, definitely um, you can hit the click, the click the links down in the description box for more information. Okay, active wear. So I started working out again, <laughs> um, like at a gym, um, about a month and a half ago now. Uh, I've got a friend of mine and we decided, you know, we joined our community center that has a really great gym and it's a really uh, great price point and all that kind of stuff. My whole family actually joined and uh, my friend and I decided that, you know, we're trying to build muscle in order to, for our old lady bodies, not for our beach body. So we want to build um, good bone strength and just keep ourselves in moving order. Cause you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, so just trying to um, improve my health and getting a little bit more fit um, again, so that I can age gracefully and can keep sewing for as long as I am kicking. <laughs> That's the goal. Um, anyway, I took a look at my um, active wear wardrobe and I've got some holes. Now that I've been working out, um, so we meet at the gym three days a week and then we um, do stuff on our own, the other two, but um, I've noticed a couple of holes in my closet, just a few things that I want to make um, for necessity. And also, you know, I, I want my clothes to, to look good and, and brightly colored. And I'm also trying to do this without buying anything, like any extra fabric. We'll see. We'll see. Because this is very much functional wardrobe. Now you can look cute and be color coordinated and all that as well. But for the most part, I just need these clothes. Um, I would rather spend my fabric budget on stuff I'm wearing outside of the gym. So <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do um, is use as much for my stash as possible with these projects. And honestly, I'm sitting pretty, I'm sitting pretty with most of this stuff. Um, there are a few uh, holes though that I want to talk about. 
So let's start with some of the patterns that I um, have been using and some fabric. You know, I get a lot of questions on where do you even buy athletic fabric and, and all that kind of stuff. So I have three main um, places that I will shop for activewear fabric, with a fourth being um, if I'm looking for this specific kind. So we'll we'll get into that a little bit more here in a bit. I um, shop for almost all of my athletic wear fabric at um, Surge Fabrics, Surge Fabric Store. These are all linked down in the description box. The Fabric Fairy, um, Green Style, Green Style Creations, they have a fabric store and um, as well as selling their patterns, which is lovely because then give you an idea of what fabrics to use with what type of patterns. Um, and then if I am really wanting some um, merino, um, Fabric Store down in New Zealand sells an activewear line of, it's a merino nylon blend. So it's not quite as soft as the 100% merino. It's a little more cost effective as well, but it's great for workout wear. And I have one more piece left in my stash that I have not yet used um, when I was buying from one of their sales. I still have some of their merino, like 100% merino, um, but I don't want to use that for activewear. <laughs> that for um, beautiful tops or dresses or something like along those lines. So anyway, um, those are my three primary ones that I go to for athletic wear and then the fabric store if I'm looking for a little bit of merino. Okay, and why merino? Merino is naturally moisture wicking, antimicrobial. Um, it's breathable. It's a natural fiber, so it's very breathable. Um, it's a great base layer in winter, but also very breathable in summer months as well. So it's a, it's kind of a it's a pretty great product. I'm also going to say that with my athletic wear, this is probably one of the only air. This and like my swimsuit swimwear, where you see me um, using polyester. <laughs> I'm kind of I just. I know that polyesters come a long way and there's some nice polyesters that are out there. I'm just kind of a snob when it comes to the polyester. I don't like the way it feels, um, but I will wear polyester and I do wear polyester blends. Some of my ponties have polyester in them. So, I, you know, there there's wiggle room there. Um, but this is where you'll primarily see the polyester and nylon coming into my wardrobe um, because it's all the performance fabrics that are nice and wicking. Um, also, this is pretty much my um, active wear for, um, or my workout wear for the colder months. Um, I don't have any shorts in here, tank tops, uh, cause I'm just not wearing those right now. Um, and also I play golf and so none of my golf wear is in here, uh, but I use athletic fabrics for all of those things as well. So, well, we can talk more about those later, but for today, this is my cold weather active wear situation. Okay, so I currently have in my activewear wardrobe two pairs of leggings, and they are the same pattern. This is the um, Green Style Stride Leggings. I love them. I have one pair without the pocket. Is that a pocket? And then one pair with the pocket. I just, I'm not running or doing anything or even hiking really in these, although I have, um, but I, I don't really need the pocket. <laughs> Uh, because I, I work out at a gym and I stick my stuff in a locker, so I don't even have my phone on me. Um, you know, I'm not listening to music or anything because I work out with a friend. But um, yeah, so I didn't put the pockets on the blue pair. I do have them on the green pair, though, if I want to. Um, the green pair is a recycled polyester um, from like water bottles or something that I got from Fabric Fairy ages ago. I've had these in my wardrobe for a really long time. And then the blue is... Um, some of the ATY, which is the generic form of suplex that you get from um, uh, fabric, uh, sorry, Surge Fabrics. And I've got those linked down below. Um, I don't have this linked down below because it they don't have this anymore at Fabric Fairy, but they do still have, carry this at Surge Fabrics. Anyway, they both make great leggings. I've said before, I don't really like leggings on my body. And I'm, I, I'm not crazy about that. But for working out purposes, I prefer a legging because that's because they're closer to the body and, you know, no you know, fabric's not getting around my legs when we're trying to do the machines and the, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I do prefer a legging for my actual working out. But this is both the same pattern, and I have obviously two pairs of those. And then with those fabrics, I have got, I actually have three, um, but in those two fabrics, I also have the Green Style um, Power Sports Bra. I've made these two in just the standard back, like there's nothing crazy about them. They've got a ton of cup sizes for this. These, this is enough uh, support for me. I have the inside of these um, 
the front is um, interlined with power mesh. Uh, I've got that link down below too. Uh, Fabric Fairy sells power mesh in like a sand color, a black color, and a white color. Um, so, I mean, it's a nude to me, but not to everybody. But I know that there are some companies out there that do power mesh in like all of the skin tones if you're looking for nude. Although, to be honest, I don't use the nude to me color very often. Um, I guess because I my um, athletic wear tends to be a little bit more, a little darker. Like for my athletic wear, I'll use it for um, garments if I'm putting a stay or something in there. Anyway, I just tend to go with black because it just looks, it goes seamlessly with the um, other colors that I, I work with. But anyway, I have li list that down below. Um, but yes, that's the Power Sports bra. They work great. I have worn the bejesus out of both of these. I'm obviously very busty. Now, again, I'm not running. I'm not doing anything that's like jumping up and down like hardcore. Um, I do workout, like um, weightlifting machines. I do um, this arc machine, which is kind of like a cross between an elliptical and a stair stepper. I do the elliptical. Um, I do kind of the elliptical bike sometimes. Um, yeah, we'll do the stair stepper, but I'm not doing anything again where like super high impact. My joints don't like that. So um, keep that <laughs> on my level of sports bras. I also have the power sports bra in this terracotta color, um, but I did the different straps. This is the crisscross straps. I had matching leggings that went with this, but um, I tore a hole in them. So they are no longer, um, but yeah. It's a really great pattern. I wear all three of these sports bras still. And I, again, I've worn they like a lot, <laughs> a lot. Uh, so it's a great pattern. I highly recommend that if you're interested. And if you've never made bras before, I mean, there's no cups or anything, like no underwires or anything like that. I'm, I find them quite um, comfortable. Okay. And then with my sweatshirts, I've not pulled all of them out. Again, we are in the time of year where I need a sweatshirt to go into the gym. Uh, so these aren't, I take these off as soon as I'm in, because obviously it's going to get hot. But um, I have found that I've been grabbing my uh, Nazari um, hoodie from Itch to Stitch. This one I've been grabbing a lot because it's a nice bright pop of color. It makes me smile when I walk into the gym. I've been wearing both my Stanton hoodies that have the actual hoodie on them. Uh, my other one's in the wash right now. So the white one that has all of the bright colors on it. Um, I've been grabbing these quite frequently. And then I've also been wearing my Allie Olsen Hive pullovers, both this one and my um, kind of a uh, marigold colored one that's solid. So both of these have been um, great as well. So those are all really wonderful. And these are all in cottons. I mean, these are um, French Terry's. This is a cotton uh, fleece. So just something, again, to get me in and out of the gym um, so I don't have to have a coat. <laughs> And, and it's, I'm, I'm freezing usually by the time I get in there, but you will start working out. You warm up here really quickly. And then finally, I really only have two workout tops, like technical workout tops. Um, and these are both the Cashmere at Cedar Dolmans. This only comes in the 12 to 30, 32 size range. Um, I just make the size 12 because they're kind of, they're oversized. These are both in the Merino, um, nylon from the fabric store and I've done the view that has the tie in the front. Now I think these are super cute over my skorts, like my sports skorts. Um, I mean, I love them over the leggings and stuff. They're just really hard to wear with a sweatshirt over them because you have a little tie that hangs out. It looks kind of weird um, for these sweatshirts and stuff that hit like high hip on me. So, I mean, I, I'm still wearing them. You know, that's fine. So I've been wearing those. And then I've been alternating a couple of my t-shirts that are in um, at least a cotton modal. I don't have a lot in rayon, um, like a rayon jersey just for a t-shirt. I don't want to wear a straight cotton spandex t-shirt because that would be very hot because that <laughs> absorbs all of your, your body sweat. And I have to admit, my, my cotton modal are probably a little bit better because they aren't like super tight to my body, like they've got a little bit of give, but they are still absorbed. I mean, like you can see sweat on me when I'm leaving. So I need more tops. That's primarily what I need. I need more tops and I need one more pair of leggings. Again, we're working out three times a week. And um, if I could have a different pair of leggings to wear each of those days, that would be great. I have to do laundry as much. Um, so I've got some plans to make a couple of things. Number one, and I'm putting this in here, 
This is in my spring capsule wardrobe plans, but I am going to make the reef, um, the green style reef sweatshirt. I will wear this a lot more than working out, but I had to put it in here because I will be wearing this to the gym, um, you know, as, as we finally, you know, start to go into a little bit more warmer weather. But this is the um, French Terry from green style with the matching ribbing and this orange color. So I will be making this up, hopefully, if not this month, early um, April. And I already had that fabric. And all of this is fabrics that I already had in my stash. Um, next, I would like to make one more pair of stride leggings. And this is the, um, oh gosh, what is it called? This is not the ATY um, from Surge. This is their quad performance athletic knit, I think. Um, I think that's what it's called. I have it linked down below. This is the coconut color. So just kind of their camel brown. I'm a little worried it's going to look like I'm naked. <laughs> I think when I, that I just don't have pants on when I make this, um, into leggings, but, um, I kind of, I really wanted a pair, to be honest. I really wanted a pair of red. I wanted to buy some red fabric to make myself a pair of red leggings. And, um, that is what, but I'm trying to, to curb myself. I may get weak and I may order myself some red. Um, especially I don't want these to look like I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> You know, I don't want like from a glance for someone to be like, she don't have pants on because um, that's a little awkward. But um, as of right now, I'm going to be using what I've got. And this is, I mean, this will be great for leggings. I can just tell by even feeling the fabric. Um, so if I don't use it for leggings, I'll, you know, use it for something else athletic wear wise, maybe in a pair of joggers. Um, and the reason I don't feel like joggers would look that way is because they're not fitted like a pair of um, leggings are. I don't know. I'll, I'll run this by Jenny and see what she thinks. And then, like I mentioned, I have one more piece of this merino nylon in my stash in this beautiful orangey red color. Um, it's a little more red than it's coming across on the camera. Um, it's coming across very orange on the camera. But I would like to do another cedar dolman, but without the tie on the front. So there's uh, two views on that, and the other one just comes straight across. It doesn't have the tie. So um, I think that could be nice because I do love this shape on me and it's really easy to wear and really easy to um, sew one up. So I think I'm going to try a cedar dolman just without the tie on this one. I think that could be really, really lovely. And then um, in the vein of not buying extra fabric, I'm thinking of making myself some t-shirts and some, maybe some of like my viscose jersey or rayon jersey from my stash. Um, I feel like that's going to wick just a little bit better, be just a little bit more breathable. It's not going to hold um, onto moisture quite as, you know, like a cotton would. Um, and I'm, look, I want a little bit looser fitting t-shirt. And right now I'm looking at the green style, um, what's it called? The leeward um, tee. It comes with a few different options. You can make it as a tank. You can make it as a short sleeve shirt. Um, it, it, you can make it looser. You can make it a little bit more fitted. So there's some different options there, um, but it just looks like a nice, easy, workout top. And if I could make one in a drapier fabric, um, that has a little bit more, um, not even breathability. Cotton just absorbs all of your perspiration. It's something that's not going to absorb all of my perspiration. Um, I don't know. I may make one and see how it does working out and then go from there. Um, I mean, they've got all these stores have fabrics that'll work for like a nice little t-shirt type top. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to Trying not to, I just have a lot of fabric, folks, and trying to be good and use what's in my stash. In my workout stash that I was going through, most of it, I could make swimsuits for everyone in my family, I feel like, forever and ever. I do have a couple of things earmarked for golf wear that's in there, um, but yeah, most of it is like swimsuit wear, which a lot of times what you would use, the nylon spandex you would use to make a swimsuit can also work for leggings as long as it passes the squat test. <laughs> you know, some of those fabrics are a little bit thinner and when it gets stretched too much, you can see through them. So um, you just don't want to be able to see through to the rump when you're bending over. So that's a good stretch test to put your fabric to. But yeah, any, um, there's really not much of a difference between swimsuit fabric and a lot of workout fabric. So um, some of the workout fabric has a little more technical um, wicking properties and stuff like that, especially if you can get the um, designer dead stock, you know, like Nike and Under Armour and stuff that have um, been discarded. Um, you can find that at quite a few of these shops as well um, on occasion. So it's good to keep your eyes peeled.
But there you have it, guys. These are my plans for upping my activewear game a little bit and giving me a little bit more to choose from when I'm getting ready for the gym in the mornings. So there you have it. That is, again, my winter cold weather. Um, it switches up a little bit when the weather starts to get warm again, but we can talk about that more when the weather gets warm. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you're having a wonderful Friday. I hope you get some sewing in. And um, I'm going to see my sister this weekend. It's um, her birthday's over the weekend. So, yay. Um, anyway, so I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend as well. And I'll be back again on Tuesday.